Okay, uh, number four, approval of the minutes uh, for the February 1st, 2022 uh, meeting. I need a motion to approve those. Those are in your packet. Motion by Rick Dodson, second by Wayne Taylor. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, additions or deletions to the proposed agenda? Uh, we do have one addition. Uh, if I can get a motion, it's consider approval of the 2021-22 original budget, uh, item 141, 156, and 177. Uh, we'll put this on the consent agenda. Uh, this is um, the original budget from last year after Crystal had spoke to Connie uh, at the county budget. Uh, there was, I think, three different versions that they had, if I'm not mistaken, Crystal. Um, so there was no minutes on which one we approved, so we just need to reapprove this original budget for this year. So I need a motion to add that to consent, consent item number 17. I would so motion by Jarman Hicks, second by Mitch Stonesoffer. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that'll be number 17 under consent. Uh, then approval of the March 21st, 2022 meeting agenda. Motion by Dolphus Stahl, second by Wayne Taylor. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, nothing under executive action. Uh, under consent agenda, I'll go through all these and we'll approve it one time. Um, number one, letters of retirement from the following. Sarah Bilbrey as instructor at Livingston Academy. Joyce Lambert as OT activities facilitator. Charlotte Masters as custodian at Livingston Academy. And Billy Phipps as bus driver. Number two, letters of resignation from the following. Katie Williams as instructor at Livingston Academy. Amber Steedham as counselor at Wilson Elementary. And Tanya Scantlin as cheer coach at Allen's Elementary. Number three, revised 22-23 and the 23-24 Oldman County School Calendar. Uh, that was in your packet. That was just some dates that uh, Dr. Holman added at the bottom that showed the discretionary days uh, on those on that calendar. Uh, number four, Allen's eighth grade trip to Dollywood, uh, May 6, 2022. Uh, number five, Allen's seventh and eighth grade trip to Rock City and dinner, uh, May the 4th, 2022. Number six, A.H. Roberts' first grade trip to Knoxville Zoo, April 28, 2022. Number seven, Wilson eighth grade trip to Dollywood and Stampede, May 13, 2022. Number eight, fiscal year 22, Carl Perkins revision five, those were in your packets as emails. Number nine, 
fiscal year 2022, ELC revision five. Number 10, fiscal year 22, consolidated admin revision number four. Number 11, fiscal year 22, title 1A revision number four. Number 12, fiscal year 22, title 2A revision number four. Number 13, fiscal year 22, title five revision four. Number 14, fiscal year 22, ARP homeless 2.0 revision one. Number 15, fiscal year 22, IDEA part B revision four. Number 16, fiscal year 22, IDEA partnership for systematic change preschool original budget. All of those were in the email that was sent to you. Then number 17, consider approval of the 21-22 original budget, uh, 141, 156, and 177. So that's all they can see. Need a motion to approve. Motion by so moved. Mitch Stonesifer. Second. Second by Miss Alice Reed. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda approved. Uh, under new business, consider approval of ESSER 3.0 public plan federal relief spending addendum. Need a motion. Motion by Jarman Hicks. Second. Second. Second by Mitch Stonesifer. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. <coughs> Opposed? Motion passes. Number two, consider approval of safe return to in-person instruction and continuity of services plan addendum. Need a motion for that. Motion by Ms. Alice Reed. Second. Second by Wayne Taylor. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, number three, consider approval to purchase approximately 24 acres of land at 15,000 an acre contingent upon core drilling from Dr. Mason. Uh, we'll get a motion on the second first. No, Need a motion. I so move. Motion by Mitch Stonesifer. Second by William Abston. Um, and I printed this for everybody before we go through and vote for everybody. This is an email that I sent to Don Collins, the TTL company that did the survey. Uh, there was uh, some of you that uh, implied about doing core drilling on that land before uh, we purchased that, just to ensure that everything was good for building in the future. Because uh, I emailed him, you can see and. The last response he put was, you know, Chelsea and I looked at the survey and concept plan that we had previously prepared and do not see anything that stands out to advise the board to not move forward with the property purchase. Uh, the largest construction cost for the track project will be the grading drainage required to get a flat pad ready for the track. There is a lot of relief, so there will be a lot of grading required. The cost of doing five to six borings will be $8,000. Uh, the drillers are four to six weeks booked. Uh, so uh, we put on their on the agenda to approve contingent upon the core drilling. Uh, then the next one on the agenda is to approve the core drilling. So if we want to approve the purchase uh, contingent upon the core drilling, then we'll approve that and we'll proceed with getting the core drilling done. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll go with Crystal to the education committee meeting and we can let them know that we want to go ahead and kind of pursuing that option. That way that process isn't held up. Uh, as far as you know moving the money so um, I just want to explain all that before we approve contingent upon the core drilling and approve the core drilling so uh, but we do have a first and a second motion to approve contingent upon the core drilling so uh, any other discussion or questions before we move to a vote the cost of the core drilling uh, roughly it's in the email eight thousand Eight thousand dollars. Now, are we paying that, or will the seller pay that? Will that come off the bottom line of the price of the property? <laughs> we would have to pay that. We've not had any discussion with the seller about paying that. See, that's what I was wondering. Uh, so uh, we can approve to have it done, and we can have discussion okay. with with the seller to. <coughs> do that, so, <coughs> any other questions? Discussion. <coughs> All right, we'll take a roll call, Crystal. William Madison? Yes. Dolphus Style? Yes. Ricky Dodson? Yes. Mike Hayes? Yes. Charmin Hicks? Yes. Alice Reed? Yes.
Mitch Stonecipher? Yes. And Wayne Taylor? Yes. The eight for and zero against. Um, item number four, consider approval of TTL to conduct core drilling at $8,000 for the Mason land. Uh, 46 week time lead or lead time, that's what we just spoke about. Uh, so I need a motion to approve that so we can get the core drilling in place. A motion by William Abstin, second by Wayne Taylor. Any discussion? Uh, that's some more money, so go ahead and take a roll call on that one. Uh, Wayne Taylor? Yes. Mitch Stonecipher? Yes. Alice Reed? Yes. Jarman Hicks? Yes. Mike Hayes? Yes. Ricky Dodson? Yes. Dawson Style? Yes. William Abston? Yes. 840 opposed. Motion passes. Uh, then item number five, consider approval of support staff insurance equitability with effective date of January the 1st, 2023. This is what we discussed the last couple of meetings uh, about the uh, insurance equitability for our support staff uh, paying the single policy uh, or equivalent to a single policy like we do uh, the professional employees now uh, that will not be effective in January because they can start enrolling their benefits in October to be effective in January of the following year. So. I got the motion. motion by Rick Dodson. Second, Second by Mitch Stonesoffer. Any discussion? Yeah, one discussion question. Right. The bus drivers is not full time, so what would we, and I don't know who else ain't full time, so what would we do there? So I know on the bus drivers, Crystal and Sherry and Steve and all, I've all had conversations about getting them insurance and since they're not, uh, I think 30 hour a week or more employees, then they're not eligible for insurance based on uh, state law and isn't nothing we can do. Uh, I know at one time, uh, Sherry was looking for an outside company to come in and try to offer them insurance. Uh, we were gonna look at that option to see and that's something that Sherry and Steve were kind of talking about possibly bringing an outside company to see what they could do for that. Right. Uh, we may not know this, but uh, to be classified as full time, that's a 30 hour work week for six continuous months. Or is, it, is, it, or is that what qualifies as a week or do we know? Uh, full time employee would be 30 hours a week. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Any other questions? Take a roll call on that because it'll be money as well. Uh, William Abston? Yes. Dolphus Dial? Yes. Ricky Dodson? Yes. Mike Hayes? Yes. Jarman Hicks? Uh, I have a conflict, yes. I need to back up and say that too. That would be a kind of family in school too. Uh, Alice Reed? Yes. Mitch Stonecipher? Yes. Wayne Taylor? Yes. 840 opposed. All right, and we'll move on to OCA recognition. Ms. Jennifer Allender. Good evening. Happy spring. <coughs> it's a little sad that our spring break's over, but we're in the home stretch now. Um, only have a couple of things that I wanted to, to bring up tonight. One was uh, the State Board of Education has sent a recommendation for that starting salary to be raised again, even higher than they thought it was gonna go. They don't know if it's gonna pass, they don't know what that's gonna happen. And I just want y'all to remember to, as we raise the lower, continue to keep those steps equitable the best you can so we don't get in the same fix we were in before. And the other thing I wanted to, to uh, talk about was the governor's new BEP program. Uh, some concern has come to the surface that maybe he doesn't have the funding in place for all of that, and that may wind up being an extra cost on the county. So I guess we all have to sit and watch that with baby breath. We don't know how that's gonna happen, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on it because it, it will greatly affect the rural areas, probably more than it will the urban. So that's all I got, thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all of that. So uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Rick Dodson. Second by Wayne Taylor. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? All right, we're uh, we want to go into the work session? Yes. All right, got a lot of stuff to cover. I apologize. I know it's been probably six, seven weeks because of the spring break pushback, but I'll, we'll talk fast and 
and get through this. So, uh, item number one, uh, work-based learning program to offer classes that include scoreboard operation. Uh, Mike Johnson to instruct. Uh, you want to touch on that? Um, when we were looking at the instructor for this, um, I didn't realize that Mike, Mike Johnson, one of our CTE Ag teachers, was already doing so much work in that area. So I want to applaud him for all the work that he's done before, and now he will have more time to do it and more equipment to do it with. So, um, uh, he's, like I said, he's already greatly involved with the media associated with LA, and especially the LA sports. So, and, he, and he does a really good job. Since, since we've been looking at this, I've tried to watch a few more games, and, I've, and he does a great job. Seems like he does a great job. Uh, and I met with Mr. Johnson, and he's eager to get started and, and showcasing this project and showcasing our students as well. All right, uh, item number two, JROTC application has been submitted. Uh, um, that has been submitted. We did our part, Leslie Riddle did our part here from this office, and then at the high school, uh, Mandy Luper picked up and did the high school portion for led to see that it was done. And I'd just like to thank both of those ladies for what they did to help us with that. And I'd like to thank Ms. Riddle too, because she's instrumental in getting that done. It was a lot of work to paperwork on that. Um, number three, virtual school for Overton County has been approved. Yes, um, and we are now transferring students uh, <coughs> under the correct school number now. Um, and under advisement from the state, uh, we'll wait to transfer all the Tech Prep students under the new number after testing, after the testing, to <coughs> make sure that the uh, testing information is correct in EIS, which is our information system. Uh, and on that one, I want to thank Kim Dillon for working a lot on that. That uh, application process, we, I thought we had it the first time, but they sent it back to us a couple of times, and we, we finally got it, so we were, we were successful with that. Uh, the number four, TSBA reviewing student handbooks. I thought that would be a good idea for us to utilize that service with the Tennessee School Board Association to send, send at least a sampling of our uh, handbooks to them for them to uh, review and make sure that it's as legal and up to date and uh, as possible. So we sent the, the high schools first and uh, we were very pleased with what they did. They sent us back um, a sheet and it told us it, things that they were advising us to do at certain parts of it and it was just very, very, very helpful. Uh, and I was very interested in it because I've, I've worked in those handbooks for the last 20 years. Uh, so then I asked the principal, the elementary principal, who would like to submit theirs? And I had two principals that said, I want mine to go. So I said, we sent both of the elementary schools now. We're waiting on the information back from them. But I, and then the other elementary schools will be able to look at their handbooks and make sure that they're um, following suit. So I think our handbooks will, uh, if we ever get in an unusual situation in the future, our handbooks should be up to speed. Uh, then number six, uh, LA Alumni Association update and recognition. You got to move it a lot faster than I move. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. We, uh, the Alumni Association was started in not, uh, 2009 to celebrate our 200th year or 100th year, 100th year of Elevation Academy. It got us out. It was very, very successful at that time. We have a good crowd here. At our union. Kind of fell between the cracks as we let it, let it die away until 2017. It was brought to the attention of our some of our teachers, brought to the attention of the principal, and, and they had a couple of meetings and uh, tried to decide what they wanted to do. And we met about four or five times, and each time we would increase our number of committee people. And we came up with about 15 people who were active. In the as a committee, as we plan our yearly, well, yearly dinner, fourth week, fourth Saturday in April every year. We have a, a drive each year to uh, for membership. It's twenty-five dollars for to be a member of the alumni association. This takes care of the, all of our expenses, which is postage and, and the meal, really. And then the, the remainder of this money is spent uh, here at Livingston Academy either for the students or the teachers or something that the building needs or, or something that you guys uh, can't, can't do with, with what you, you know, I, I'm not sure what the wording is that, that you can't do it, but uh, it's 
we, we needed some what we call petty cash for the school to, to do some things with. Uh, we started, our, our, our first meeting was in the 17, 2017, and we, we met and we set a goal of 1,000 uh, members. Right now we're, so, we're got here on 500 members. We set a goal of $25,000 a year uh, after expenses, which the postage is our big, biggest, biggest expense, and First National Bank is very helpful in helping us with the, the mailings and, and the cost of the postage, but the, we use some of their machinery. And, uh, the the 25,000 goal that we set, we, we reached that year, year before last. This will be our third year that we we almost have reached it again this year. So that's the third year that we've reached the 75,000 or the 25,000 goal. We have we have spent a little over $75,000 on your school and on different things. We'd, we'd like to give you a list, really, of, uh, explain to each year what we spent the money for. Uh, we, it, it, the generosity of the, of the people, you, it's a $25 fee. We leave it open to uh, whatever the uh, graduate wants to, to donate, and it goes up to whatever. We've had uh, $5,000 ones, we've had one $10,000 one. Uh, we've had several <coughs> hundreds and five hundreds, and so you can see that we, we, we've reached our goal without having the thousand uh, uh, members. And a lot, some of you are our members. We have you don't have to be a graduate to be a member, you can be an associate member and pay the $25. And you don't have to be a member to come to the, to the meal, you can come to the meal and pay $10 for the meal. And uh, the committee takes care of the cooking and, and we just have to buy the food for the meal so we don't run out of our product of the expense there. Uh, Anybody have a question about the, the money is spent just entirely for the school? We don't. Uh, we didn't have a PTA or a PTO or whatever you call it. We couldn't have any uh, fall festival or anything here at school. So we had situations where we, you know, we need, needed money to buy stuff for the school. Uh, anybody else? We have some associate members that are very active in the winter inner committee uh, that didn't graduate from Livingston Academy, but they have put a lot of time and work into it. And time and work, a lot of stuff goes on behind the, the scenes, and I will throw this out, that the, we, we mail out, this last two years we've mailed out almost 7,000 invitations to join uh, or up, re up, we call it, uh, another year. And involves about handling on one envelope about five times, which is about 35,000 <laughs> times that we handle this envelope about wearing it out. But it, it's, 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 a, it's enjoyable to us. We enjoy it. Good and glad to do it. And if you have a question, I'd be glad to let have a last day or let them answer it for you. <laughs> <laughs> they do most of the work for us. I don't do much. That's uh, all. I just want to thank y'all for what you do and, and the, the project you've taken on. Uh, especially the courtyard out front looks great. The pole barn that you built for storage for the facility, um, you got to go above and beyond, and you do it with excellence. And as a board member, I'm just very appreciative. And, and we wanted to, for y'all to be able to come and to tie your program and hopefully increase your membership and continue to do good things. So thank y'all for, for all you do. Absolutely, and, and I'd like to say thank you too because behind the scenes work that you mentioned, I mean, I saw y'all out there. When I was getting my daughter's senior pictures made working on that courtyard out there and that's things on the paper you don't see is all the time and effort put into it as well so thank you all for that uh, just real quick uh, uh, a lot of times the little things that people don't notice mean the most uh, and what I'm talking about here is uh, like Mitch said you know the stuff you see you see where that money goes to you see the improvement uh, but it's those medallions that goes to your seniors that you don't see. It's the first aid kits for the schools. 
it, it's those little things that probably wouldn't be in place if, if you guys didn't put forth that effort. So thank you. Just as, as an associate member as well, I'd like to share what a remarkable thing it is as an employee there as well. Because if it wasn't for the Alumni Association, our students would miss out on so much. They provide the Makerspaces card that's in the library for all project, projects, plus the STEM certification projects that they do. They're doing STEM week this week. And that's just the beginning. I mean, it goes on and on and on with all the stuff that they do. So it is remarkable. The different things that the students and the teachers are able to, to attain as well. It's been great. Definitely. Anybody else? So we'll go back. Uh, Balfour representatives will begin repairs on Lewis and Academy floor on April 25th. And they coordinated that date with Mr. Melton, so that they thought that was the best time to come and do that. Um, Are they doing Mr. Parshall again, or is it? It's, they're, they're, they're just repairing. Yeah, so from my understanding, it's going to be another repair. So when we start planning for our <clears throat> building program, which I think I'll start that work, we'll start that work in September. Uh, we need to put a new floor and bleachers in there because it's going to happen again. <laughs> uh, my opinion, it's going to happen again because uh, they have to put the wood in, sand it down to match the old wood, and it's so thin and brittle that it's, I hope not knock on wood, but I anticipate having the same problem next year. Um, well, it's not a good look when you're having to invite the family of the, of the opposition to help you pull the bleachers out. Yeah, so. you know, Way to involve them to get there. Yeah. So we're we we'll start the building program September. So that will be back in there again, uh, again to, to review. So um, number seven, classroom audio enhancements will be extended to third grade. Uh, previously, Dr. Holman talked about <coughs> K through two uh, due to funding saving on the LA bathroom restoration project. Now, I could talk quite a bit on that. This, this money came from, <clears throat> from ESSER 1, uh, and it was from the Technology Reimbursement Grant. Uh, and when, that re when we were reimbursed that money, we were to put it back in ESSER 1. Uh, and then we decided, we looked at needs, and we wanted to, one of the things that I personally really, really wanted to do was redo the bathrooms at the high school. That was just, so here this money came. It was allotted for something that we could attach to that. It worked out beautifully. Um, and in your packet, <clears throat> there are some pictures, and, and I just want to tell you, when you look at these pictures, the pictures are very nice, but they do not do justice either side. The bad side, you know, the before or the after, they don't really do it justice. Um, the bad looks a little bit worse, 
and, and the good looks a whole lot better. Uh, so, I'm, as, you, as you can tell from me talking about it almost every meeting, I'm really, really happy that our students have such a, uh, a nice place to go to. So, I'm really, really proud of that. Um, I also want to mention that um, <clears throat> with this money, um, we spent uh, around $64,000 on uh, renovating the bathroom. We were expecting that to cost a lot more than that. But uh, Steve Mosley, our, um, our supervisor that uh, over maintenance, uh, he was very, very frugal with that and he, uh, and he managed to save us quite a bit more money than what we anticipated. And um, then this topic of audio enhancements came up. So there we had another little elect extra allotment of money that we could do something else super nice with that we would have never gotten to do before. And um, <clears throat> this audio enhancement was mentioned to us. Um, and at first, we were gonna, like he said, we were gonna do, try to do it in the K2 classrooms. That would have been 39 classrooms across the district. That was for permanent systems, permanent. Mr. Thrasher mentioned to us that we have a, we had one of those systems in the county already we wanted to, it was, it was uh, portable, and he suggested that we put this in a room and let's just see how it goes, and we'll see how it does. <clears throat> we were so impressed with the portable one, which is called a Veeam system. We were so impressed, the teachers were so impressed, and the cost was so much better that we were able to not, we were able to go away from the permanent and go to this portable system and, and put this in a lot more classrooms. So now, instead of 39 classrooms, we're going up to 51 classrooms, which is K-3 instead. And <clears throat> I, I just really want to take this opportunity to brag on Steve Mosley and our maintenance men for all that they do. Uh, they, are, they seem like they're really on the ball and they really care about getting everything done. Not only do they want to get it done, I feel like that they want to get it done right, which matters a lot to our schools. Um, Oh, and one other, uh, anyway, this, this will zero out the ESSER 1 funds, which have to be zeroed out by uh, June 30th of 22. So. When are we expected to get those systems? We've not ordered them yet, but uh, you know, we'll have to put out a bid and all that. So. But we're looking at doing that pretty soon. Will it be in place before next year starts? That, oh, that, I sure, sure hope so. Yeah, that's the intent. Uh, then item eight leads into ESSER 2 and ESSER 3.0 updates. So I met with Mr. Mosley uh, two, three weeks ago. Uh, obviously, ESSER 2, the original plan was ESSER 2 was to upgrade, I think, 40 to 50 something HVAC units. Then ESSER 3 was to kind of look at classroom additions, possible roof additions. Uh, so with ESSER 2, We've been able to do nine rooftop units at A.H. Roberts, uh, eight rooftop units at Rickman, along with 26 PTAC units, uh, smaller indoor uh, wall units at Rickman, uh, which leaves, I think, uh, about $510,000. Based on what the price we've been getting uh, from on bids, uh, we'll be able to go ahead and do uh, Hillham, and Wilson. Uh, I think we'll be able to do most of all their HVAC units with ESSER 2. Steve and I talked. We feel the best plan would be to ESSER 3.0 is $3.9 million. We're probably not going to build eight classrooms at Rickman for that price. Uh, the best option probably with ESSER 3 is that $3.9 million is to go ahead and put a roof on LMS and Allen's. And after we do the roof, we go ahead and put the HVAC units back on there because you don't want to put the HVAC unit come in take them off then put a roof on them after the fact then with our building program to do all the classrooms and everything that we need we'll have a better number and a better evaluation of what we need later this year of what classrooms we need so as of right now ESSER 2 would finish out uh, all the HVAC at Hillham at Wilson then, and it has to be spent by 2023 then ESSER 3.0, the 9 million, the three, I'm sorry, the 3.9 million <coughs> would be LMS Allen's roof along with HVAC units to top everything off. 
That way our building program, we shouldn't have to worry about roofs. Let me, let me rephrase that. We shouldn't have to worry about roofs at Allen's Rail and Mess. There's still some patchwork, like at Rickman Gym's got some work. Um, there may be some little ones at Wilson, I believe, but the major full roofs, we don't have to worry about. Then we can focus on class revisions and things like that. So that's kind of the plan right now. And then going forward on that, I'd like to see us set up some sort of plan where we're replacing a lot right now that we do maybe five a year or so many a year to replace. Yeah, them. and I had that laid out one time, um, like a 15 year plan of replacing, you know, 20 to 30 units every year. Because in 2001, um, they replaced 185 units when they did the last building program, which was good. The bad news is now we got 100, 180 units that are 22, 21 years old that we're having no issues with now. So once we get through this, I've got the file. I sent it to Steve uh, to update every time we replace units on the year that we replace them. That way we've got a good track going forward of what year that we have and what how old those units are. So. Then number nine, did you want to table that? So number nine, um, that discussion, Dr. Holman wanted to table that until next month. Uh, then number 10, discuss additional school nurse position. I would really like to see us do that if we could. There are times that our nurses are just absolutely spread too thin. And I think right now, we've got a nurse at every school except there's two that split, right? Yes, sir. Uh, we we have five nurses total right now that are servicing all seven schools, and one nurse goes to Allen's and A.H. Roberts, and we have another nurse that goes to Wilson and Hillham. So if we do add another one, that Wilson Hillham's a big split. <laughs> he may want to look at one. Well, two would be better, but two would be better. You know, do what you can. So there are times there's situations come up, maybe an emergency, and uh, you can't get a nurse to the school like we need to. Yeah. And if we do that, uh, I always go back to saying that, you know, Wilson's 45 minutes away from Livingston uh, Regional Medical Center, and then uh, it's 30 minutes from Cooper. If there's not an ambulance on the mountain when we have an incident, which has happened several times, we have nobody there to take care of that student. Yeah. I think we need to look. I mean, at least one right now. I'd love to have one in every school, uh, but I, I think that Wilson. Could we interchange the uh, um, situation at Wilson by um, having one when we hire a new agency and assistant that we hire one that has a nursing training? With since we are so isolated. I'm not, not a registered nurse by any means, right. but you're a licensed nurse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that's not doable, but maybe it'll work. Alan, so you mean I'm not paying part of the day nurse pay and part of the day EA pay? That would work. Um, I mean, I know they're not going to have uh, um, enough to keep them busy doing nurse work. Right. But if they knew that that was their primary goal, someone that was interested in this we might have done it. I, mean, I, I would think maybe a retired maybe a retired nurse or you know, someone that wants to do some different nursing as opposed to hospital nursing or something like that. Uh, so that would be definitely something we could look into. Well, Rich, I, I know we don't coordinate who's where, but from my opinion, that far away, uh, if anyone needs a full time nurse, that would be the primary. 
have been looking at ways to fund this, and uh, I, I feel pretty good about having uh, having ESSER funds to pay for uh, ESSER funds to pull us through this year for half of it, and then maybe have special ed to pay for the other half. That would get us through this this year. That's an idea. So, time we approve in April, you get a costing. I mean, it'll be years about up anyway. That's not a long-term fix, but that's something that would, that would mandate us through for a little while. I mean, we could just go out and make sure the budget, and we build the budget for next year. So, well, like Mike said, uh, you post this in the middle of April. calculated at they'll pay for one nurse for every 3,000 children that you have. That's how much funding that Overton County gives. So we've got 3,100 kids. So we've got three point something or other uh, nurse. You know, that's how much we're funded for. Uh, we all know that we need, much, we need more than that. We need much more than that. Uh, so, I mean, you all have done good over the years to, to keep finding ways to have much more than what the BEP was funding. So we'll put that on the agenda next month, and Dr. Holm will have the dollar amounts for us as well. So. Uh, number 11, update on technology plan for M. Crasher. Uh, so as we discussed um, last time, I guess I was in the board meeting, was um, the five-year board uh, plans to uh, incorporate uh, an update to the board um, twice a year for uh, our technology. And, and uh, um, so in this, I wanted to kind of uh, touch on some of the things that we've accomplished this year, some things that we've implemented and how that's impacted uh, the classrooms and then also uh, just to make the board aware of some of the upcoming um, you know, concerns or recommendations that I have, uh, things to maybe think about as we uh, go into planning the budget. Um, <clears throat> so some of the initiatives that we have uh, done, of course, the, you know, the board y'all approved that uh, we could increase our bandwidth to DNA, that was done. Um, and that has, that, that has really helped to uh, relieve, uh, well, just make it a better experience for all of our students and teachers. Um, <coughs> the internet service that uh, is just so key to instruction nowadays, and uh, that's really just made a big difference to increase that. And that was a four times increase that, that you all approved this year, and I think that's, that's really been, been useful. Um, Line-wise and class-wise is kind of part of the, it's the same thing. We uh, purchased this through our ESSER funds, through our ESSER two funds this year. And uh, line-wise is a combination of a hardware and software um, uh, for content filtering. And so um, basically as technologies have improved, uh, so has it been harder to uh, content filter uh, and make our, uh, make ensure that our students have safe 
experience on the internet at school. Uh, so LimeWise does a better job of that. It actually helps, uh, we, it's able to um, inspect encrypted uh, internet traffic. And so by doing that, we can make sure that students are, uh, aren't able to do things like use a VPN to go around content filters in, in class. Um, ClassWise is a uh, kind of classroom management part of LimeWise. And that helps uh, teachers, you know, ensure the students are focused on instruction. Now they can do things like uh, they can see all the students' screens at once. Uh, they can bring up a web browser on their computer. They can see what all the students are working on. Uh, they can uh, limit students to a specific site, or they can even block a specific site. So if a, a teacher decides, well, today it's not necessary for us to have YouTube in the classroom. They can eliminate YouTube and direct students to. Uh, like it's study island or some you know content that they're actually using. Um, so it's a, I think it's it's really going to uh, continue to help uh, you know the, our, our classrooms and our teachers have responded really well to that. Um, we've also been able to do free mobile hotspots. That's something that's kind of we've, we've put out there. We've not had a, a really big um, turnout on that, but it's it's great to have that there for those that are in need. We have uh, students using those right now, um, and we've been able to do that through. Uh, the emergency connectivity fund from the FCC and uh, T-Mobile uh, through the state of Tennessee also had a Project 10 million grant that supplied us the actual hotspots and then we got the funding for the unlimited service through the ECF um, and so that's that's great to have there and I'm, I'm anticipating that that will get renewed uh, in June so I plan to apply for that again so that way we continue to have that available for our students uh, going into the next year um, and the hotspots belong to the schools because T-Mobile provides those so it's not anything that we have to uh, continue to pay for. Um, <clears throat> also as part of our E-rate uh, that we've done this year we have uh, our category two which is internal connection um, we have uh, we're upgrading the wireless uh, access points for Ace Roberts and Lipscomb Middle School those are the two uh, buildings that have the oldest access points, which is actually kind of what we have we have here, <laughs> and so by after this project, we'll actually be able to repurpose uh, some of our older access points uh, to other places, our non-instructional facilities, to give better wireless coverage here as well. Uh, and so, and part of this is putting an access point in every classroom. And those two buildings, they it's like every other classroom. So this just provides better availability and and uh, better coverage for for students and teachers uh, using the internet. Now I wanted to include this, this is just a, a bandwidth utilization for today. And you can see here the spike, and normally whenever we come back from a break, we have so many devices that are updating, we have so many uh, you know, personal devices where we allow you know, students, teachers to use their personal devices on our network. Those also draw, uh, and so we usually will get this spike when we come back, and when we didn't have the capacity for that, it would actually, and we, and we really just slow down the internet for everybody and take a long time to recover from that. But you can see here that we have two gigabits and we only got up to uh, just under 1.25. And so we have plenty of overhead still. We hit that peak, we came back down and we went back into normal operation mode. So no no issues there. And uh, so we can, oh no, I dropped my water. <laughs> so anyway, so it, it, it worked well uh, but we not had any major and usually we would have that when we come back from a break. So those are just some of the things that we've implemented this year and that we've done. Um, and I wanted to um, also talk about uh, some of the needs that are, are potentially coming up. And I wanted to uh, talk about um, our devices that we have out in the district. So, and to kind of give you all a good picture of where that need will be and when we'll need, uh, when we'll see the need arise, um, in 2020, whenever we first got our ESSER 1 uh, CARES Act funds, we did a survey of all the teachers and what devices that they had, and we wanted to see, you know, where do we want to put that, uh, those funds uh, to update computers, because we had computers at that time um, that were, you know, probably 10, 10 years old or better <laughs> that teachers were still using to teach, and uh, so we wanted to address that, and then out of that survey, um, we had <clears throat> we had um, this we had this largest portion right in here that was uh, you know we had 47 percent 
of devices that teachers reported that was uh, three years or older of the devices that they were using. So we focused in on that with that CARES Act one. We put uh, seven, that was around 88 or so, and, and we uh, put 70 devices that we bought uh, specifically for replacing teacher devices. And we also, of course, with the pandemic, we wanted to uh, provide a secondary device to make sure that they had everything they needed in order to carry out online instruction. So we also purchased a device for that backup, that secondary device, and also that was dedicated to carrying out the Teams. Uh, so every teacher, that was 141 devices that we purchased there. So every teacher in the district uh, in those four classes had a device and a secondary device that was less than uh, less than two years old. And so going into that, oh, well, also one other thing, in the survey that we, we asked them, you know, what kind of device or what technology did you need to carry out this online instruction? And the majority was a 46% of keywords that they typed in and the fill in the blank was Surface Pro. So that's why we focused in on Surface Pro. And that's the device, the device that I'm using right now, uh, that's why we focused in on that to uh, purchase with those CARES Act funds. And um, so the thing that I wanted to bring before the board is uh, us thinking about what, are, what do we do as these devices age and how do we do uh, a, ref or, you know, a refresh cycle. Um, so, <clears throat> So if you think about what we didn't replace, um, we've got about 53% of devices that will be approaching three to four years old. And uh, the teacher computers um, have approximately, you know, we'll see about six to seven years. And that's, as I mentioned, we've seen some just stretch 10 years or so. <laughs> um, but we want to keep them uh, with a, a good computer that they can do because there's so much that they do online right now. Every bit of our instruction is online. We want to make sure that that's a good experience so that way they're not frustrated with the device but they're they're able to do the instruction and um, so <clears throat> if we get about six to seven in your lifespan so that gives us maybe about a year this year or next year we need to think about what can we do to start pushing out new devices to uh, keep teachers with an up-to-date device um, so my recommendation would be to think about somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 40 devices per year and we spend approximately about $1,000 per device whenever we do an update. So you can see it's probably about thirty dollars to $40,000 on teacher devices would get us pretty close to uh, keeping a good cycle and doing that every year. And then by the time we get to the end, we come back around and, and be replacing those devices that we bought at the first of the cycle. Um, <clears throat> and then the other part would be student devices. And what we've done in the past has, has uh, been to purchase devices for the freshman class at Lewis Academy and let those devices follow those students up for four years as they go through the high school. And then uh, we've also purchased for the fifth grade class. And uh, that kind of changes, that's different at the elementary level because some schools will place those devices in carts and some schools will allow those to go with the students, uh, some send them home. So it, it, it varies, but that has been just kind of a, a good way to <coughs> provide an equal amount out to the schools based on their fifth grade population. And so that's what we've done. So that's approximately uh, 450 to 500 dollars every year. And I suggest that we continue that pattern. Um, but the only thing was, is of course, that's not a, a budgeted item in the past. And so that's been purchased up in the fall and so I would like to uh, hopefully see that maybe if we can work that into the budget so that way that we would be able to purchase those in the summer and then have them ready for the start of the school year um, and then so based on what we purchased um, that would be approximately $176,000 yearly to replenish the freshmen with the Surface Go device that we purchased uh, which is a tablet uh, that the freshmen and the sophomores have got and then also that we'll be purchasing the, uh, the traditional laptop style uh, computer in the elementary school, in the fifth grade. But, um, and that's all that I would have had just to uh, just touch on some of those um, highlights and what we've been doing this year. And then uh, those are the two main concerns that I, I have. I think we can think about those as No, that, uh, 
um, all teachers use a service, different service for device. And then some of them have a docking station, so they'll connect it to the docking station, which will connect into you know, the projector or the monitors. Gotcha. So we're looking at roughly, if we were to do the proposal with that, we can invest roughly $220,000 a year just in new device purchases. And keep that going every year. Yes. Which, in my opinion, I, just like your HVAC system covers, there needs to be some type of student device, I think the four year lifespan is, is you know, that's pretty good to get that out of that. <coughs> Any questions for Brent? I don't. I just think that in our, the meeting and the budget meetings that we have and everything with that, we definitely need to look into this and putting that $220,000 into that budget. So like Brent said, have everything bought and delivered in the summer, get everything ready and roll it out in August. And we, we're doing everything that we can from, from this building to make sure that the teachers are as ready as they can come August, come the first day, they're ready to teach them. They're not going to have to wait until uh, Thanksgiving to get a curriculum or get their books or get whatever they need. Well, we're doing all that we can to have them ready day one. So. Now, on the, on the docking station, you said every teacher doesn't have one? Um, so, yeah, with the CARES Act funds, we bought 141 docking stations to go with those community kits that we referenced. So those are something that we're going to have to look into also, upgrading the, the computers as it goes. Oh, no, no, the docking stations will work. Um, that's the great thing about um, the Surface Dock. It's actually compatible with the first Surfaces and all the way up to the current version. Okay. So that's like eight generations. Okay. So. so it would be something several years in the future that it may be that we need to look at requesting those also. Yeah. But it's not something that's immediate. No, not immediate. So just round numbers with the uh, ballpark of two gigs, and would that be a reasonable number <coughs> for us to purchase? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. I think that it, that would also give a little bit of space in there to... Two gigs. Yes. If you all will remember when we had Brenner come and speak to us about our the five year plan, when he spoke to us, at that time in the five year plan, we mentioned that there would be, uh, he would come and give us updates twice a year. And um, he was more, much more on the ball than I was because I had forgotten that we had decided that March was going to be one of the months that we had an update. So uh, just like I do most, of, most days, I tell him thank you for all that he does for us. Um, we're very fortunate to have Brent and have his knowledge on our, uh, with our school system. Uh, we just can't thank you enough for all that you do for us. But uh, on, a, on a lighter note, I thought I would say this. <clears throat> Sometimes he comes in my office and he'll start talking and he's really on a roll and, uh, and he'll start using these terms that I know nothing about and I'll say, listen, Brent, Brent, you've got to gun it down a little bit for me. I don't know if, I don't know if any of you heard any terms that, uh, that you didn't understand the meanings to, like VPNs. I know a little bit about a VPN now, but uh, at one time I didn't. So I tell Brent occasionally, lower it down to my level, sir. Uh, but we sure do appreciate you. Thank you, Brent. Yes, we do. All right, so item 12 and 13, I'll just go through this quick. Um, again, I talked to Steve Mosley. Um, Every time I talk to him, he brings up the bus driver thing. So uh, obviously with this new EPLT uh, requirement, they gotta do 160 hours of training before they even get per or, or license. Uh, could pose some issues in the future. Um, my recommendation would be that once Dr. Holman gives us an update on what direction we're gonna go with the EBLT, whether it be hiring somebody locally to do the training or if TCAT's gonna bring somebody in on it, we work through them. Once we decide that, then maybe we have a work session with Mr. Mosley uh, to kind of talk about um, getting bus drivers, retaining bus drivers, um, you know, some processes in place because uh, there's a big concern on his part, especially when he looks and 14 of them could retire any day, you know, tomorrow, uh, and you can't find them anywhere else anyway. So uh, one, 
once we find out the direction we're going to go with the EBLT and the training process, I just kind of recommend us kind of having a little work session or some kind of committee meeting or something with Mr. Mosley here to throw out some ideas to kind of, you know, what can we do to support, you know, that aspect of it, especially in the future. So that's all I want to say about that. And another thing I think about too on the buses this coming year, last year was the last year the Volkswagen <coughs> paid on that. You know, we buy one bus, they pay for one. The bus. grant, yeah. The grant money. So, what, if I don't have any bus we have to buy this year, we have to buy any. So, that'd be another cost in our budget. Yeah, we'll have to look at that. And ironically, that was completed today. That uh, the what, that Volkswagen grant was completed today. They came today and made sure that we had done all the parts that we were supposed to do with the district ensure that we, you know, get qualified for the thing. So. And speaking of buses, I know Brent and I was on the safety committee together, and we had a meeting, uh, I don't know, three weeks ago probably, uh, and they did all the fencing at all the schools, um, or some of the schools that did the fencing, and there was like $30,000 left over, uh, and we decided as a safety committee that they're going to upgrade all the radios and the buses to digital. Uh, currently, they're in the old so FCC. You have to pay a fee every year to be part of the FCC channel. Wilson, you can't even get service up there, so you can't even talk to anybody. Steve can't even talk, get them on the phone or on the radio. Uh, so they're going to go to a digital. I think Mickey Ledbetter said he would program them all for us for free. Uh, so everybody have digital. They'll be tied into the sheriff, the city police, the EMS. So if there's an accident with a the bus, they can directly call EMS whoever they need to ride in instead of going to Central Walk or the bus garage, bus garage, turn around, calling emergency. So they'll have access to all that. Everybody will be on digital. Wilson, they'll have no issue communicating at all. So that's the rest of the safety grant. They're going to start <coughs> upgrading those radios to digital as well. So I was really excited about that because I think that'll make yeah. more safety for our students and um, be helping the bus drivers and everyone involved. It's one more um, comment that I wanted to make about the EL uh, DT, which is the entry level driver's testing, which means an increased amount of time uh, in the classroom for people that are interested in becoming a bus driver. Uh, what I'm really looking at is, a, is, like you said, is a possible partnership with the Livingston PCAT uh, so that we can hopefully work with them to have an approved Upper Cumberland training facility. Um, and I've been in talks with Myra West about that. We talked about it quite a while today and we have numerous other times. Um, she's got several things that the way I understand that she's wanting to do this week and, uh, and we're gonna meet again on Friday afternoon. Uh, and hopefully we will get some, uh, some of that nailed down pretty good by then, I hope, that's my hope. Uh, one of the concerns that she had was a driving space or a driving pad as she referred to it. And I mentioned that um, we could use the LA parking lot if that was suitable, if that met the criteria, uh, and hopefully it will. Um, but with these additional hours that are being required, there's numerous other uh, entities or businesses that are gonna need that uh, service that she can provide. And hopefully we can partnership with her to provide that. So, um, for instance, the electric company, the phone company, and the county government, you know, we're all going to be needing the same thing, so hopefully this will be a, a good service to the, to the whole upper family. All right. Darwin, you got anything? No. Great. Well, after the fact, all the retirees, it's retiring. It's all their work they love. Sweet. Thoughts? Wayne? Oh yeah, uh, Donnie wanted to give an update on the comptroller report real quick, so that'll be the last time. Uh, several news outlets have uh, asked for a response to the recent comptroller's report that was published in the local newspaper. Uh, when I began as director in mid-January of 21, last year, um, I soon became aware of issues that needed attention, and I worked in a timely manner to efficiently address those concerns uh, as they were brought to my attention. Uh, each time I sought legal counsel pertaining to the issue at hand. <clears throat> Soon after I arrived <clears throat> at the Overton County Board of Education, I had numerous staff meetings where I expressed my expectations with great clarity. 
uh, it was my goal to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Uh, as time progressed, it was evident uh, that in order to correct areas of concerns, changes needed to be made. In June of 21, after much thought, I made necessary uh, transfers that I felt would benefit our school system. Uh, the people responsible for the deficiencies within the comptroller's audit are no longer employed in the central office. Uh, I have taken the necessary steps to employ the appropriate individuals who can efficiently perform all the duties expected of them. Uh, we clearly expect that the audit for next year, uh, we expect it to be very different, um, a vast improvement. It has always been my goal to be a good steward of the school system's money uh, and to be transparent with all stakeholders. I want everyone to know uh, that, that I'm trying to be transparent and not hide anything from anyone and continually keep the students in mind when making all decisions. So that was what we had prepared to say. Uh, I do have a question about that uh, that I wanted to ask. I personally read over the audit report that you did. A lot of the findings that I was seeing in there were reflected to of where we did make that change right in the middle of ending the school year. Is that the way that most people say that also that it's like there's some looks like there's some budget amendments that needed to be made and all of that stuff that we did not get made that would have cleared up a lot of those audit findings. I mean at the end of the <coughs> season, yes. uh, because like I'll give you an example that um, one million dollars they were talking about with the general ledger the account balances if there were a bunch of amendments that needed to be made if we made those amendments that would have went away correct? And then uh, there were some other things in there that I know that if we would have made amendments that like the, uh, um, there's another one in there, the, <coughs> in the federal projects, that's another one that if budget amendments had been made, would that have cleared those up too? Because I know there was like $788,000 in that deficiency of issues of purchase orders. That would have been something that we would have cleared up in uh, budget amendments, because I know that we regularly do budget amendments. We did several tonight, correct? Not the federal budget, that's yeah. correct. Okay, that's uh, yeah, that, 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 was, <coughs> that was probably a couple items due to the transition. Yeah, uh, that probably was. That's what I was looking at through there, and you know, I just wanted to mention to the public also that that was a lot of stuff that we saw this time because it was such a swift change as Dr. Holman said and we could have if we would have we didn't have time to make those in order to get that addressed and then uh, like I know there are some things in there that <clears throat> we have to deal with the state with and they're right there too that were things with the interloan thing and all that stuff but a lot of those things are stuff that budget amendments could have fixed correct that I'm looking at there four or five of them Yeah, I know two for sure. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the exact number, but I know two was because of the transition. Okay. Uh, anybody else? All right. That's it. Uh, nobody else has anything. That'll be it. Appreciate it.